We gather here in memory of 20 beautiful children and six remarkable adults. They lost their lives in a school that could have been any school in a quiet town full of good and decent people that could be any town in America. The Jonas Brothers are here. They're out there somewhere. Sasha and Malia are huge fans. But uh, boys don't get any ideas. I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> you will never see it coming. You think I'm joking? You think I'm joking? <laughs> Barack Obama wasted no time in turning the recent Oregon school shooting into a political issue, calling for gun control, saying, It cannot be this easy for somebody who wants to inflict harm on other people to get his or her hands on a gun. He then rattled off a list of gun-free zones where shooters had inflicted damage, including Columbine, Blacksburg, Newtown, Aurora, and Charleston. In response to Obama's admission that gun-free zones don't work, Gun Owners of America Communications Director Eric Pratt said, Mr. President, you just identified the problem. Every public mass shooting since 1950, except for two, has occurred in a gun-free zone. This shooting is no different. And that is why Gun Owners of America agrees with the 86% of police officers who say that these types of incidents would be prevented if the potential victims were not disarmed. Obama's call for so-called common sense gun control is insane, given that the criminally minded don't obey the law. You know, every time there's a shooting in America, our moral betters on the left immediately ammo up the assault rifle of their rhetorical arsenal, namely, our country's sick, twisted obsession with personal firearms, our adolescent psychosexual, dangerous and frankly embarrassing when facing our European film critic friends, American gun culture. So, hopping over to the ever-reliable Wikipedia, for example, we discover that when it comes to per capita gun ownership, the USA does in fact top the list in glory. When measured as the number of guns per 100 residents, the U.S. comes in first at 90. 90 guns per 100 residents. Evidence for the progressives on the left that they do in fact live in the murder capital of the world because when it comes to gun ownership, America is number one with a bullet with by far the highest per capita gun ownership in the world. 90 guns per 100 people is half again more than the number two spot held by Serbia with 58. Now, all we have to do to prove the left-wing progressive weenie case for banning guns is to do a quick search for the per capita murder rate. And sure enough, leading the number two country, again, by about half again more, with 90 murders per 100,000 people is Honduras. Socialist gun-controlled Honduras. Because even though America has by far the highest per capita gun ownership rate, we do not have the highest per capita murder rate. And unfortunately for the progressive leftist argument, we're not second either. Or third. In fact, when it comes to per capita murders, Team USA didn't even make the top five. As a matter of fact, we didn't even make the top 10, or the top 20, or the top 30, or the top 40. We're not in the top 50 per capita murders. Gun culture America is not in the top 60 nations in terms of per capita murders, or the top 70, or even the top 80, or the top 90. Of the 218 nations and territories listed for per capita murders, the United States of America, Murderville, USA, did not break the top 
100. We are, with 4.7 murders per 100,000 people in 2012, number 111. 111th place puts us near the top of the bottom half of all the nations and territories in the world when it comes to total per capita murders, and virtually all, if not all, of those nations ranked higher than us are big state socialist utopias with stringent gun control laws. How tragically disappointing that must be for our moral superiors, and unfortunately for the left, it gets a lot worse because 111th place America's murder rate of 4.7 per 100,000 citizens is artificially much higher than it should be because it includes so many deadly, murderous, toxic places like number one on the list of highly gun controlled, democratically governed since the Stone Age murder pits like Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, with strict gun control laws, has a per capita murder rate of 54.6 murders per 100,000 citizens. If Detroit were its own country, it would just beat Venezuela for second as the most murderous country in the world behind Honduras. America's 111th place, 4.7 murder per 100,000 people, also includes, in order, democratically controlled, heavily gun controlled New Orleans with 53.2 murders per 100,000, St. Louis with 35.5, Baltimore with 34.9, Newark with 34.4, Oakland with 31.8, followed by Stockton, 23.7, Kansas City, 22.6, Philadelphia, 21.5, Cleveland, 21.3, Memphis, 20.2, and Atlanta, 19.0, and of course, Chicago with 18.5 murders per 100,000 people per year. America's per capita average of 4.7 murders includes all of these high crime areas. The first city to appear in gun mad Texas is Dallas, which isn't even in the top 20. America's overall average of 4.7 is as low as it is because of places like Plano, Texas. It's the last city on the list with a murder rate of 0.5. Four. Now, having been to Plano, Texas several times, I can tell you with confidence that virtually every home in Plano, Texas has an entire arsenal of AR-15 assault rifles, semi-automatic shotguns, 30-06 hunting rifles, they got 45s, 357s, they got 38s, they've got 9 millimeters. they have an assortment of 22s for the kids to practice with, not to mention every species of tomahawk, bowie knife, hunting knife, jackknife, bayonet, switchblade, they've got pointy rocks, they've got sharp sticks. The per capita murder rate in Gun Nut Central is 0.4 per 100,000. If the United States of America as a nation had the same murder rate as Plano, Texas, we would not be 111 out of 218. We'd be 211 out of 218, well below Switzerland at 0.6, half of Germany, Spain, and Denmark at 0.8 murders, and well, well below half of New Zealand, the Netherlands, Austria, Italy, France, and Australia. If all of America had the murder rate of the gun nut capital of Gun Culture USA, Plano, Texas, then America's per capita murder rate would be one quarter of those murderous, violent, rampaging, death-worshipping Belgians with their horrific 1.6 murders per 100,000. So, maybe it's not the guns. Maybe it's the people holding the guns. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. How many more innocent people? How many more? How many more? What has been the number one cause of unnatural death in history? Democide, or death by government, has killed 290 million people on record. Look it up. Go look it up. In the 20th century, government murdered four times as many people as were killed in all the international and domestic wars combined. USSR, 61,911,000 people killed. Hitler's Germany, nearly 21 million people killed. Japan's imperialism, Nearly six million people killed. Western colonization killed over 50 million people. Pol Pot's Cambodia, funded by the U.S. government. Two million people killed. China's Communist Party, as many as 76 million people killed between 1949 and 1987. And the list goes on and on. Demand to know why the Department of Homeland Security bought more than 1.6 billion hollow point bullets. How many more people does government have to kill? Enough. Enough. Demand an end to citizen disarmament. As an American. As an American citizen. As a patriot. For your children. Enough of the people laying down 
and letting government kill them in mass after disarming them as they've done throughout history over and over again. Now is the time. It's time. It's time to realize that when the government takes your guns, people die. It's time to realize the biggest threat to you and your family is government. It's time to recognize Government is the greatest killer of all time. Demand they show you the word hunting in the Second Amendment. Demand our politicians uphold the Constitution and Bill of Rights as they swore to when they took office. It's time for our leaders to read the Constitution. It's time for our leaders to obey the Constitution. The Constitution. The Constitution. Because a well-regulated militia with 10 round magazines wouldn't last very long. So now you know the most dangerous thing to you and your family in the world is government. Because mass murderers agree, gun control works. The Department of Homeland Security has stockpiled a staggering amount of ammunition. Two billion rounds, most of it hollow point, armor piercing variety enough to kill every American, man, woman, and child five times. The DHS claims all these bullets are for quote-unquote training. And what are they using for targets? The DHS has been stockpiling quote-unquote non-traditional gun targets, portraying everyday Americans defending themselves, even purchasing targets of a small child with a handgun. The ATF, with fond memories of the Ruby Ridge Massacre, is also getting into the act with a target depicting a woman protecting her unborn child. What is good for the government apparently is not good for the public. The Veterans Administration is moving to disarm so-called incompetent veterans, sending out thousands of letters with the following. A determination of incompetency will prohibit you from purchasing, possessing, receiving, or transporting a firearm or ammunition. If you knowingly violate any of these prohibitions, you may be fined, imprisoned, or both. Of course, the letter leaves open as to what incompetency entails. Military veterans are traditionally liberty-loving conservatives. This incompetency may be the government's view that veterans have a predilection for becoming domestic terrorists. A little-known sub-department within the DHS called the National Consortium for the Study of Terrorism and Responses to Terrorism, START for short, published Hotspots of terrorism and other crimes in the United States. Who should we be worried about per start? Those who are, quote, reverent of individual liberty. Those who are, quote, suspicious of centralized federal authority. Those who believe there is a, quote, grave threat to national sovereignty and or personal liberty. Sounds like the basis for the Obama administration to take out veterans, Tea Party members, anyone that holds conservative values. Anyone who believes that the Constitution of the United States is the highest law in the land. Everyday conservative Americans are becoming public enemy number one of the Obama administration. And enemies need to be disarmed. And that is exactly what is coming. The NRA uncovered a secret DOJ memo calling for gun registration followed by confiscation. Then the only ones who will have guns will be Obama and his government thugs.